Welcome back to the Real Soul Engagement. Before I jump on to analyzing game number two between Rat First Feast, let me remind you guys if you enjoyed anything about that last promo you saw, some of that cool graphical animation and video production in the works, and you're interested in kind of the idea of making those type of things yourself and helping out in developing games like StarCraft II, League of Legends, Call of Duty, etc., please go to www.fullsale.edu slash MLG. And just tell them which programs you're interested in, and they'll give you more information about different education opportunities in whatever type of field you're interested in. If it's video animation, video production, game design, audio, engi audio engineering, 3D animation. There's all sorts of programs they have there. If you're interested in any of that, just take a minute of your time to go fill out that form and see what you're interested in. So let's jump on to game number two bet of between Rhett versus Feast. It's going to be a Cloud Kingdom, and there's a couple important things you're going to focus on this game. So the first is going to be uh, looking at early game Protoss vs. Zerg pokes and what the goal of uh, the goal of those are. And then also we're going to talk about how you want to get the most out of your Phoenix uh, when you use Phoenix and how you can do that and how Feast does that in this game. And then we'll talk about how to use the Swarm Host vs. Protoss and the way Rhett uses those on Cloud Kingdom. So let's jump into this game here and we can see Feast is moving out with that. You know, this, 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 if you've been watching Art of the Swarm, this looks like a standard poke, right? Two Stalkers, a Zealot, Mothership Core right behind them, or some of the, you know, just basically as soon as you get a couple units, you send them out and attack. And the goal behind these type of attacks is always going to be, you, uh, you're trying to force some Zergings, but also, you're not just trying to force Zergings. If you're going Phoenixes or Airplay, any damage you can put in these Queens is great, because, of course, that makes the Queen much easier for Airiness to kill later down the road. So force some Zergings, get a drone kill or two if you can, and then also soften up those queens as much as possible. And then retreat before you take too much damage on, on any of your important units. The Zealots are throw away, but the Stalkers and Mothership Core, those are a little more expensive. Try to keep those guys alive if possible. So as you go forward here, the next one we're going to talk about is using Phoenix, right? So we can see he's got these three Phoenix crossing the map right now. And when you first send your Phoenixes out, right, you first want to kill those queens before any support crawlers get up. And the reason you always want to go for the queens first is because as soon as Spore Crawlers get up, you won't be able to kill those Queens anymore because it takes a little while for Phoenixes to kill a Queen. And of course, if there's a Spore Crawler complete shooting you the whole time, you'll be losing Phoenixes, and that's a bad trade because Phoenixes are worth more than those Queens. So uh, I I instead of doing that, what we want to do is basically we want to kill the Queens first before any Spore Crawlers get up. Once they have Spore Crawlers up, we can't kill Queens anymore. We can, what we can do, though, is you can always kill drones. As you notice here, even if the spore core there, you pick up a drone or two, run away, while you just lose shield damage, maybe take one or two hits on your uh, exoskeleton of that phoenix, but really not taking any serious damage. With the range 5, you, you can just wait for some more energy, and then continually go and do more and more harassing. You can see here, jumping back uh, into the main, you can get a couple more kills uh, wherever you can, right? So here you are, you pick up one, one drone, you kill an overlord, you get away. You pick up another drone over here. Uh, maybe it's a queen's there. You run away. Pick up a Hydranus. Just keep getting this free damage wherever you can get it. Because as long as you're on top of your Phoenix control, you should always be able to kill drones from the, from the sides of their bases without taking any serious, serious damage. So always try to you know get those queens first. But then even once they get the Spore Crawlers, keep killing drones, keep killing drones, keep killing drones. Anytime you're not macroing, you have something extra to do, come back and just pick off one drone here, one drone there. And it'll add up, right? I mean, it, every time Feast does this, he's only getting one or two drones. But he's not taking any damage. And he's getting a lot of kills, and it adds up. It's all cumulative, right? So it looks only like one or two drones. But over the long haul, it adds up. Another overward there. To stay very active with their Phoenixes and constantly, constantly kill units throughout the game. As you can see, what you'll do is at the end of your Phoenix Rash, it should look something like this. Look at that unit's lost tab, right? I mean, he's not even done. He's getting a couple more drones here from the side. But this is the whole goal here, right? You should be losing nothing, and your opponent should be losing a lot of units there. So make sure that the unit slot tab looks like that whenever you go Phoenix, because uh, if it doesn't, you're making, you're making a mistake, right? The Phoenixes should not die. You should always know if, if there's infestors or anything of that sort on the way. And as long as there's no infestors on the way, feel free to just constantly pick off drones and continually do damage throughout the game. Get a very, very cost-efficient Phoenix opening. Now, as we go on this game, of course, the Phoenixes are being cost-efficient, but the Zerg's droning up, had a faster third than the Protoss, so it kind of balances out. The next thing we're going to talk about is, from Rhett's point of view, utilizing these Swarm Hosts, right? These are these guys over here, right? So, a couple things about Swarm Hosts that are very important. 
for those of you guys who don't know what storm hosts actually do, let's take a look at what they do. So you can select one, right? And you'll notice it doesn't have any attack, right? It does have a pretty decent move speed, though. It moves actually uh, off creep at the same speed as a zealot. On creep, it'll be faster. Or off creep at the same speed as like a sentry, a, a colossus, a zealot. That's standard 2.25 movement speed. But the thing they do is when burrowed, they can summon up the, these Locust Swarms. So the whole idea is that uh, the cooldown Locust Swarms is 22 seconds, right? So you can burrow, summon up a Locust Swarm, then you can you have 22 seconds to do whatever you want with those guys. You can run them back to your base, you can run to a different location, you can just run 10 squares back. And then once you know it's safe to come back, run 10 squares back forward, burrow again in the same location. Whatever you want to do, you can run around, you can you just make sure they're safe, right? But then when you summon the Locust Swarm, as long as you have the upgrade, which Wreck gets, those Locusts survive for 25 seconds, right? So you can, what you can do is, uh, let's say you have a map is on Cloud Kingdom, right? And you're the Zerg player doing the Swarm Host. What you can do with your Swarm Host is you should never cross this line with Swarm Host, right? You should never go over basically this line. If you're, if you're this player, if you're, that's your main right there. If you ever cross this red line with Swarmhost, you're making a, a pretty significant mistake. Unless you've already won the game and like you're trying to kill the main down here or something. But if the last thing you kill is the main down here, then then you know whatever the game's over. And the idea of that is because let's say your swarm hosts are right here, right? Your hosts are right here. How far can your locusts go, right? They've got a range of somewhere between 50 and 60, right? And 50 and 60 means your locusts can basically are effective in like this range right here or something like that, right? I mean, it's not a perfect circle, but you, you get the idea. So as long as, and if your swarm boats are on a ramp, right? If your swarm boats are on like uh, this ramp, you can easily go in and do damage to the natural. So you can easily go and do damage to your third. And all you need to do is, is do some damage on every attack, and it'll add up. You know, you, you kill one or two pylons with each locust wave, one or two zealots, one or two stalkers, whatever it is. As long as you're back here, it doesn't matter if you don't kill much, because what's going to happen, right? Let's say the Protoss player. Uh, let me switch colors. Let's say the Protoss player is right here, right? And they get angry because your locusts come down here and kill like one or two zealots, right? They're like, if I just sit here, I'm going to keep losing units. I'm never going to get anywhere, right? Eventually, I'll just lose everything. So the Protoss player gets angry and he tries to come up here, right? Well, then what you do is in between you, you, in between locust horns, remember, you, you summon locusts every 22 seconds. So it means you summon locusts. They come down here, right? The locusts come down here. That'll be the big L. And then you just you just run away. Right? Uh, you can just, right after you make a Swarm of Locusts, you just unburrow, pick up, back up a bit, and then now your Swarm Bows are back here, and their radius is, you know, something like this, right? And so you can still kill this Protoss army with your next Locust Swarm. So no, no matter what, you can just keep moving those guys around, always be in range of something useful, and, uh, but the main idea is you always want to keep them safe, keep them in the back, because they have, the their strength is they have insane range. They can attack from literally halfway across the map. Their weakness is, of course, because they only summon those locusts every 22 seconds, they're not that great in a straight-on battle. Because once that one locust wave is done, they're, they're useless for, for, you know, uh, until the next cooldown is up. So, uh, there's really, you don't want to get right up near the enemy because you, you, you got to use the range. You don't want to get too close where they're actually vulnerable to being attacked because they don't have an attack on their own. So when you're at, you're jumping into game, uh, the one thing you don't want to do is send it back in this corner, right? Because I mentioned, remember how I mentioned if the Protoss comes after you, you want to be able to retreat them in between Locust uh, waves? Kind of, it's basically a form of kiting, right? You can sw you can kite with the Swarm Bows, except it's you're kiting across, then you're kiting attacking from across all maps. So it's like a weird form of kiting, but that's the idea. But if you put yourself in this corner back here, where are you going to go, right? Uh, the Protoss can easily cut you off here. And so it looks kind of nice because you can attack this location. But remember, uh, Look at how look at how much these swarm hosts. They still have so much life left. You could attack this location from back here as well. And if the Protoss comes out, you can retreat. If you're this close, the problem is, is if the Protoss has kind of a big army, and you're like, oh no, I need to get out of here, right? Then you then you, you can run away and the Protoss can cut you off. Now here, this is the really important part. Whenever you're using swarm hosts, you gotta make sure not to waste any attacks, right? Uh, as soon as you see these freckles, right? You see these little freckles on their backs? The freckles means the cooldown's up. So this take one second out of your running time to burrow those guys, send a wave of locusts ahead of you, right? To wherever you're going, send a locust wave ahead of you. 
so you can follow them and the locusts can protect you as, as you're as you're moving around. And then it only takes a second to burrow some of the locusts with the auto burrow and continue on your movement rate. But always, as soon as you see the freckles on their backs, burrow and send out those locusts. Because if you don't, if you're running around without locusts, that, that should never happen, first of all, because the, the locusts actually survive longer than the cooldown. So you should always have some locusts out. If you're running around without locusts, what can happen is, of course, uh, the Protoss player can jump on top of you, and then uh, they can catch your guys uh, without locusts. Now, remember how I said it's also important if you're retreating and you don't know where they are, your locust should escort your guys. So unfortunately, Rhett sends the locust down to the bottom, and uh, they're not really escorting the Swarmos. Swarmos get caught off guard. You're all going to be slaughtered, and then Feast goes on to, to win this game. But, uh, I mean, the idea there was Feast uses Phoenixes exceptionally well in the mid game, doing constant damage, and then Rhett uh, made a little mistake of overcommitting to Swarmhost, sending him way too close, and then not really using that kite idea where you always have the Locusts out, and then you always, uh, if you're retreating, you send the Locusts along the same pass just so that uh, they can protect your, your Swarmhost. Uh, because in the same battle, in fact, let's actually rewind this just a little bit. Okay, right about here. If you can think about what, what could have happened, let's say um, the Locusts were right here, right? Uh, let's actually we'll move this here. So let's say, as we go forward in this, if you had the Locusts right here, right? Then when the Protoss army comes in, the Swarmos can just run straight to the right. And all they have to do is buy some time. Because you can run the math. Let's say the cooldown is 22 seconds, the Locusts survive for 25. Let's say the Protoss army is really big and scary and it can kill all those Locusts in like 10 or 15 seconds. Then what you want to do is you want to make sure the distance between your swarm hosts, right, these guys, the distance between them and the Protoss army, right? So let's say your hosts are over here and the Protoss is over here. This distance right here, that needs to be seven seconds of, of movement speed or something, right? So however long it is, like let's say your lo they kill your locusts and you've got seven more seconds until your next, uh, your, your next locust swarm is ready. You got to make sure that you 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 retreat and have that that space to summon up the next locust swarm because you never want to let the swarmos get into actual contact with the enemy. If they do, of course, we just saw it. What happens is it's ugly. They just sit here and they kind of scuttle around, and then they all die. All right, and that's not pretty when they scuttle around and all die. That's not a good thing. So, Fizerg's out there. Just remember to keep those swarmos on on your side of the map. Always kite backwards with them and uh, make sure that the locusts are in between them and the Protoss army. So that wraps up game number two. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with uh, game number three.